Welcome to Free Academic English. I'm Geraldine and today's video I'm gonna answer the most common question a person asks when he or she has to take the TOEFL or has chosen to take the TOEFL. Where to start? In this video I'll give you a series of steps that will help you set times and objectives. I've come up with seven steps to follow. Step one is to know the ideal and the necessary score you need. So it's very important to pay attention to their requirements because maybe you saw, I don't know, 80 and you think that is the score you need. But if you read a little bit more, maybe you'll find that they mention 70, 80 and 90. Maybe 70 is the minimum, minimum required score and with the minimum score maybe you need to take an English course before applying or, and the next score 80 is the score you need for example for applying and maybe there's another score 90 just an example and that allows you to apply for a scholarship as well and also sometimes they give you a general score like 80 and they also have minimum requirements for each skill like you need a 25 in speaking for example but just a 20 in reading so you need to have those numbers in mind step one step two the step two is to know your english level the same if they ask you just for a general score then you can generally test your English online or at an institution. You can do it online. You can test your English online in general, or if they ask for particular marks for each skill, you can also take online exams per skill. I'll leave you some links for you to check. And I recommend doing more than one so you see how accurate those results are but in general they're pretty accurate and you can choose a long test a short test whatever you want step three step three is to confront the level you have to the required level this is an important moment so there are three possibilities the first possibility is that your level is lower than the level you need in that case, you need to study English and you can go to this video in which I tell you how to study English for TOEFL. If your level and the level you need are the same, are almost the same, then you can move on to step four. And the other possibility is that your level is higher than the level you need. In that case, you can go to step five. Step four, understand the exam. You can choose the explanation you want for the exam. There are tons of explanations. I recommend the one from ETS, which is the company that provides the exam. They explain the exam very well. You can use YouTube to YouTube explanations or web pages. I will also give you all the links to them. You can choose one of them or you can look at them all because the more you know about the exam, the better. Don't rush into things. Understand what the exam is about. Step five, register at the ETS page. The administrators of the exam ETS have a web page in which they explain all about the test. In that page, you can also create an account. It's a free account, but this is the account you can use to register for the exam, but not necessarily at the moment you sign up, but whenever you want. The good thing about registering is that you put all of your information there you, they explain a little bit more about the exam and they give you a sample of the exam. That way you can feel what it's like to take the exam. 
and you don't have to register for the exam yet. Step six. Now that you have an idea of what the test is like, you can start preparing for the test. So the previous five steps were just setting the mood for this moment that is actually preparing for the exam. This is a part that is going to take you longer. So this is the part where you want to invest the most time. How do you prepare for the exam? Not to learn English. How do you prepare for the exam? In class and out of class. In class, in class, you choose the favorite preparation material you have. If you don't have one, I'll give you some options. Most books and web pages about the exam will explain in detail each part, uh, each section of the exam and the kinds of questions in detail. So you can really understand each part of the exam. From these, the most used are the official uh, TOEFL explanation and there are good books like Barron's or The Long Man. Any book is pretty much the same. They explain the exam in detail. There are other books that do a little bit more. They explain the exam, but they also give you techniques and they also give you some explanations further explanations of what you need to do or how you should answer each type of question. My favorite book from this type of book is the Thompson book. It has great explanations, it's clear, and I really think it helps a lot. So if that's what you're looking for, I recommend that one. Uh, on YouTube and web pages, there are also many popular websites like Magush or Notful that are also good. You can look them up. I'll give you the links. And this exam is kind of long and each part of the exam has its own things. So in this part, you want to spend at least a couple of months to get to know the exam well. If your level of English is similar to the score unit, if your level is higher, then you can spend less time here, just as you feel comfortable with the exam. That is in class. Out of class, you need to practice as much as you can. They are evaluating your reading, your listening, your speaking, and your writing. So it's very, very useful that you practice those skills in the setting that the exam is, that is an academic context. Maybe you feel good about your listening skills, but you are not familiar with academic subjects. So start listening to more TED Talks or documentaries or podcasts or lectures that you can find online, but I will also give you the links. The same for reading. Maybe you can read easily a magazine article, but it's gonna be a little bit different on an academic book. So I recommend reading about academic topics, the generalities of as many different topics as you can, like about history, about geography, about science. And so you get used to the way they are presented. The same with speaking and writing. Maybe you are very fluent in English and you feel very confident talking, going to a restaurant, ordering something but maybe you are not so familiar with the academic context. You can see that very well on movies that are set in uh, academic context, like at universities or any formal content, really. So they speak a little bit more formally, more properly, and in a more organized way. The same for writing. Maybe you just write lots of emails or chat with your friends in English. Mm -hmm but this is an academic exam. So you need to be comfortable writing an essay, knowing about the organization of the essay, reading essays, or reading some content 
that is formal education and it will have that essay organization or that academic organization. Some other very useful skills for this exam are note taking. So if you can, you should practice that, like speed writing, summarizing in both writing and speaking and paraphrasing. That is saying this, the same using other words. Step seven, practice. Take the exam. The TOEFL, the official TOEFL guide has two exams, but I don't know why they don't make it in a format that is just like the one you take when you take the TOEFL. But a book that has a better format is the Barron's book. The Longman book has two exams, but I'd say that their level is lower than the real exam. The Barron's though has a very good, a, a very similar level. Taking these exams will give you a pretty accurate idea of where you are. So I'm not saying take an exam every day because it's three hours of an exam and, and it's exhausting. You're not learning, you're testing yourself. So just take the exam once, maybe twice, if you didn't feel comfortable the first time, just take it once or twice. And with that score, and with that score, see if you're ready for your exam. So taking an exam once or twice will give you a score. The score is fairly accurate. So with that score, you are going to confront the score you need to get. So with the score that you get from your mock, you're going to compare the score you need and the score you got. If the score you got is way far from the one you need, then you need to go and study some more English for a while. If the score is near the score you need, then you can go to step six again, feel more comfortable with the exam and continue practicing those particular skills you need. If your score is similar to the score you need or maybe higher than that, you have to set the date for your exam and keep practicing until that day comes. And that's it. Thank you for watching. Subscribe, share, and I hope to see you soon.